Welcome to Chandwell. My name is Michael and I'm building the back of a commercial street to run behind my station. It was time for a task that I've been half dreading but half looking forward to for quite a while and that is building a fire escape to run from this door on the back of the latest building. I wanted to make a zigzagging metal fire escape like this one that I saw in Leeds. Now I know I could get amazing results by using a brass commercial kit or maybe a custom 3D print or even a custom laser cut card component. But this being Chandwell, I wanted to see what was possible using paper, card, and a bit of old food packaging. So join me then on a frustrating, eye straining, but ultimately rewarding journey into building a fire escape for Chandwell. The planning drawing I used for the building's design showed a fire escape which had a lower flight projecting 90 degrees from the face of the building. This was to avoid the door at the bottom, but it would not fit into my low relief street. I turned to Inkscape to help me determine the best route that the fire escape could take. Using only a few rectangles, I tried a zigzag, a longer platform at the top, and a terrible straight down affair. I settled on this zigzag shape, with a half flight at the bottom and a small 90 degree turn to finish it off. With this general shape in mind, I drew out the individual components and confirmed that they would go together to fit the building. The strings were the easy bit. I printed the shape onto my usual paper. I cut around it roughly and then stuck this back onto a different part of the same sheet of paper. I repeated this and was left with a staircase string stuck onto a laminated stack of three sheets. I cut these out using my scalpel. To help me get the spacing right, I cut two small rectangles from 1mm card. Using PVA glue, I gently stuck these to the ends of the strings and they'll represent the platforms on the fire escape. Positioning parts this tiny with tweezers is surprisingly easy, they just slide into place. I was left with a small staircase, just 3mm wide and made only of paper and card. Using paper, I would never get N-gauge railings that would look like tubular steel. I wondered what would be possible. I printed a test using railings that are half a millimetre wide. I stuck these together in a stack of three like I did with the stair strings. It soon became apparent that even if I could cut such small shape with just a scalpel, paper was not the right material. My good friend Tim makes absolutely bananas creations from paper in N-Gage. It just so happens that he made a fire escape about a year ago. Tim uses waste acetate just like me, and he came up with a method for hand cutting tiny bits of acetate. I decided to try his method with my fire escape. I printed the shape to a sticky label and stuck this to a bit of plastic packaging. I taped the acetate to the mat to stop it slipping and set about cutting. This was not easy. The acetate doesn't cut as cleanly as card because it's a bit springy. I just kept slicing through the thin elements or leaving tiny plastic hairs sticking out all over the place. I tried again using a solid grey shape rather than a white outline as it was easier to get my ruler into the right place. After about 17 minutes of cutting and swearing and chuntering and questioning my very existence, I had destroyed another. Then, on try three, perfection came out. This was by accident, but I kept it nevertheless. It wasn't until try seven that I got another one. Finally, I think I've nailed the technique. I ditched the tape as I prefer the free sliding feel of the components that I'm cutting. I dug the tip of my scalpel into the corners and gave it a tiny pull. Rotate 90 degrees and do it again. Another 90 degrees and then another. And now all the corners are cut. Joining up the corners is then a case of using incredibly light strokes and feeling your way into the notches cut earlier. Keep the ruler over the bit that you want to keep. This is because these railings are under 0.6mm thick and you don't want to tear them. The inner bits eventually pop out and you're left with fine railings that are still quite over scale, but nevertheless, they look nice in clear plastic. Be very, very careful. I found that there was a visible difference between the railings that were 0.6mm and those that were accidentally closer to 0.8. I was very fussy and threw away more attempts than I kept. I dunked the completed part in water to loosen the label's glue, but I then still needed to brush with some isopropyl alcohol to get them completely clean. But, in the end, I was done. 
I used PVA glue to stick the railing to the stair course before painting the whole thing black. Because this is low relief, everything is a bit squashed up, so these staircases will only be 3mm wide. That means that each step is a rectangle 1.6mm wide by 3mm long. I used a rectangle of scale scenes embossed metal texture. I drew a line behind the centre of the rectangle and then two more lines 1.6mm away from it on either side. I then added guidelines 3mm apart. Once printed, I cut a notch at the end of each of the centre lines, turned it over, and then used the back of my scalpel to score between the notches. I covered one half in PVA glue, and then folded along the score line. This gave me a bit of texture two sheets thick, without a visible line along the front. The texture wraps from the top surface right round to the bottom. I slice along the 1.6mm cut line, and then lots of little slices along the 3mm guidelines. I was left with a little pile of steps that were barely visible. I dabbed PVA glue along the staircase strings, and then started a labour of love with my tweezers. I gently dropped each step individually into place on the staircase. At this tiny size, the PVA holds the piece of paper wherever you put it, and the steps can just slide into position. But there were several times where a tiny lapse in concentration led to a sticky pile of tiny steps on my desk. I got there in the end though. Even with my glasses on, I don't think I could really see the black painted notches into which the steps fit, and fractional variances in the width of the steps caused issues too. I'd not fancy walking down these misshapen, wonky, house of fun steps if I ever visit Chandwell, but once in place, they look good enough from a typical viewing distance. I like that they look individual, you can see the underside and you can see through to the building behind. It actually does look like a fire escape. I used PVA glue to stick the first flight of steps to the side of the building. I made a little jig from 1mm card to help me get the spacing and alignment correct. The acetate tends to be a bit springy, so a small stack of card held things in place whilst the glue set. This fire escape has taken me longer to build than the rest of the building that it was attached to. I definitely took the hard option doing it this way, but was it worth it? I'd have to say, yes. It's cost me less than two pence in materials. On close inspection, it looks wobbly and a little bit decrepit. But from a normal viewing angle, as I narrate this, it actually looks like a fire escape and it's exactly what I was aiming to achieve. But I can look at this and say that I did it. I made a fire escape using a bit of old food packet and a scalpel. This is what gives me most satisfaction with Chandwell, and for me at least, it's what makes me keep building week after week. I'd like to say a quick hello to Northern Jersey Railroad, who joined my channel as a Chandwell tour guide this week, and to the Chandwell residents who also joined. Your support of Chandwell means an awful lot to me. Thank you. Please use the join button under this video if you'd like to see what joining is all about. I think I need a rest after this fire escape. Watch out next week, where I'll be revisiting how I made the skew arch in the viaduct. Until then, thank you for watching, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.